We were talking about this before we recorded. I half feel like Apple invented these <laughs> levels. These levels. Are you okay? All right, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Pod. Something feels off. Yeah. Something feels a little backwards right now. That's right. We're the hosts this week. Burr, 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 burr. Oh, yeah. They don't know where all the sound buttons are yet, so they might be a little slow. Oh, they, they know where that one is because <laughs> it's a big red one. requires an explanation for audio listeners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who are not watching us with your eyeballs, Adam and I are at the big table. The big boy table. Marquez and Andrew are at the producer table. And this is because last week we had a mutiny. <laughs> Full on revolution. <laughs> Now, we played a game of ping pong, two games of ping pong, doubles ping pong. And in those games, there was high stakes. There was a bet that if Adam and I won, we would get to sit at the big table and host the podcast. And here Here we we are. are. At first, I thought we were joking. (laughs) So did I. (laughs) Same. And we started playing like really well. And (laughs) it got real serious. Andrew, we can't lose. We're playing so well. And then we blew kind of a big lead at the end. Yeah. So here we are. I so, definitely got to work yesterday and they were like, so you excited to host the podcast tomorrow? And I was like, oh man, we're doing that. I like, was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'd say we let them win because then it just, it's less work for me to do this week. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just kidding. Sure. We, we got beat fair and square. So this week we have a lot of topics. We have a Vision Pro stand, a new Garmin, uh, Signal, WhatsApp, iMessage, all had updates, AI, Reddit training deal, Walmart buys Vizio, Apple added a ton of things, Sora, we never spoke about last week, yeah, we didn't OpenAI, get a chance. Sora, we didn't talk about it. So there's like a lot of uh, a lot of things that we have yeah. to get into this week. But first, Apple Vision Sand. Apple Vision, Vision Sand. Is that, how we, is that how we sound? Yeah, it's weird, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm just like, I've never seen it from this perspective before. It's, it's, it's I, really good. I, I will it. say you definitely have it down better. I felt like I was just reading off the the page here, but like you, you do a thing where you like look up, you look down, you look up. And, yeah, you, you get know. into a flow of it yeah, for no, sure. Exactly. I'll get there in three episodes. Well, to kick it off, our good friend of the show, creator of the Apollo Reddit app, Christian Selig, posted a uh, 3D printable Vision Pro stand that I thought looks really nice, and I just wanted to shout it out because this is an interesting time in the Vision Pro's life cycle. There's not a ton of third-party accessories you can buy, but they are slowly hitting the market, and this one is free and 3D printable, and I thought that was great, but I did Yeah, this sent you down a rabbit hole. (laughs) A few other Vision Pro accessories, uh, some of which are neat, some of which are hilarious, and I just wanted to show you (laughs) some of them this week. The first one... <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. I, I just, <laughs> the power of having all these buttons here, I'm so sorry. It's really tempting. Do you see the temptation I'm now? I'm trying not I'm... to press them all the time. But I was, I just, I'm sorry. Oh my God. Well, the first one, arguably the least ridiculous, is, uh, and you can buy this at an Apple store too. This is the Belkin battery holder. It's sort of like one of those uh, cell phone belt See, clips. I would argue this is the most ridiculous because you could buy it at an Apple store. Really? This is like they're, like they're selling this officially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A belt clip <laughs> for a battery pack. Does the battery get hot like if it's in your pocket? No, but what if you have no pockets? Mm. You know? Big brain. Yeah, and no pockets with belt is a reasonable clothing situation to find oneself in, I think. Um, <laughs> not that wearing an Apple Vision Pro is a re- reasonable fashion <laughs> decision to find That's oneself a fair in. point. <laughs> but they only get weirder from that. The second one we found that I thought was just hilarious is an adapter, someone selling on Etsy, to uh, instead of the, uh, what's the twin band called? The the top band? Dual, dual loop dual, band. Yeah, so instead yeah. of the dual loop band, if there's not enough cushion and, and whatever for you there, this lets you attach a second solo <laughs> knit band to your existing solo knit band, sort of as like a, a skull a cradle. step. It's one of the strap. silliest things I've like ever seen. This um, is, this is good. Like this th- is good. This is a good one. This is what Apple should be selling. Well, if you think that is good, if you want to go to the bottom of my list, uh, you know, Marquez has mentioned Apple Vision Pro puts a lot of weight on your cheekbones. There's a lot of vertical force yeah. going down. So <laughs> with this product, you can uh, wear a baseball hat and then actually hook the Vision Pro onto the brim of the cap. 
as like an additional support layer. This is awesome. Uh, this is the kind of innovation I want to see. And if you buy two of them, it's only $34 each. On top of the 3500 for the Vision Pro. Yeah. But that's fine. And I don't know why you would ever need two. Uh, the last one I saw is... I like I this has to be something that existed before and they were like, oh, this would work with Vision Pro. Um, it's the weird Timu link for like this sort of balaclava looking thing that I this? guess I have helps never your seen face this. not get sweaty. This is a thing. I mean, it's on Timu. So thing is, you know, <laughs> really loose description. <laughs> of what it is. <laughs> nice, nice. This but <laughs> I feel like you'd get sweatier with this. It's I, just putting more fabric between your face and... And the thing it's but it soaks up the sweat. Yeah, maybe it's like breathable or something. Oh, it says breathable. <laughs> Is it though? It's also two dollars and twenty four cents. I know. So I don't well, know how much I'm believing. Look this. at the third photo Mark has just looked at, and look at the with mask without mask. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's just a woman profusely oh sweating, god. and then a woman not sweating, but has a little cloth. <laughs> yeah, mask but on. is also a ninja. <laughs> Ridiculous! It's, it's crazy. But um, yeah, shout out to Christian, shout out to the Emerging Vision Pro accessory market. Excited to see what else gets there. Before we launch into the real stories this week, we also want to mention David, who's in Japan right now, instead of being on the podcast, put out a video on the studio channel. What a loser. Who goes to Japan? <laughs> God. He's actually doing something really cool there that I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about, but hopefully in the next few weeks. Yeah. We can mention. But he uh, just put out a cool video on the Fuji X106, uh, which is weird because that's the successor to the X100V. So clearly they need to figure something out in the naming department there. Yeah. But it's a great video. It talks all about JPEGs and heaps and compression and color. And uh, if you like heaps, that's your video. If you, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, if you're if you're a heifer. Uh, <laughs> no, a good, a good shout. I love, I love that video. It's a super good explainer. I find the Vision Pro accessories fascinating. Yeah. Really? Okay, because go on. We, remember, maybe this was like two weeks ago, we were talking about this magical like 3 to 5% of the price of the object is where the accessory should be priced. The meta of, okay, not a lot of people have... We're talking Pros. about Apple. Marcus. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but not a lot of people have Vision Pros, but they have a lot of money because they're spending $3,500 on it. Why is a $2 Timu eye mask a real consider? Like, I'm shocked it isn't $20, to be honest. Right, right. It's, it's just a fascinating <laughs> dynamic with these. I think because this was already being sold for other VR headsets. Yeah, I think it, it shows other VR stuff. This is there. just now they can add Vision Pro to the to the title, get that SEO. Also, just saying, according to Timu, the original price is $16.58. So... It just happens to be on 86% sale, allegedly. Wow. I just like how three of the things you posted were sold on Timu, Etsy, and eBay. <laughs> Where do you buy stuff? <laughs> the Belkin what, battery pack sounds like something that should be on like eBay. Like, I, oh, it's a 3D printed belt I, clip I, I for know, your battery. Man, I, I think it's... Uh... Belkin's huge. Yeah, yeah but like... why are they... Like, I just feel like that's a weird accessory. Well, I mean, if you're Belkin... Oops, sorry. No, for Belkin, it's genius. Yeah, I was going to say, if you if you work for Belkin, yeah. you see that Apple is releasing a new product, you're like, well, we're Belkin, so we need to make an accessory for it. But what if accessories you're... <laughs> can we make for the Vision Pro? They probably thought for a long time about this. They're like, can we make a second head strap? I don't know. Apple's is pretty good. Can we yeah. make a different, uh, like an eye mask for it or something? That's kind of weird. Well, we do make cases. We can make maybe a carrying case. Oh, Wait Apple did that already, but you know what we can do? <laughs> Bell clip. But what's crazy is that they had to go to Apple and be like, here's our idea. Mm -hmm. We want to sell a belt clip for your absurd battery pack in your store. And Apple mm -hmm. was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Apple's like, you know, we don't make one. <laughs> we so. don't make one. So go yeah, ahead. Sure. That's just crazy. It's like Apple admitting that like, yeah, this is kind of inconvenient, isn't it? Like, here's a yeah. belt clip. It's funny because Apple has the stuff that they sell in Apple stores that's made by Apple and they have third party authorized things that Apple brings in and puts in the Apple store that they pe think people will want to make. And they don't make it themselves, but they think people would want to buy it. And so they can mark it up and sell it. And there's lots of weird cases and accessories for their products and little stands and things like that. Like I wish my iPad would just stand up by itself, but mm. they, the folio case is 80 bucks. So maybe I'll buy like a random other stand that they sell. Yeah. So they, Apple allows it, I guess. And this is fine. It's like Belkin is is one of those fish that like eats the al algae off the shark. Like the shark's like, I won't kill you. 
It's exactly yeah, what yeah, it is. Yeah. What is that called? The, the, rem- the remora. remora. Yep. Oh, I feel like you had a whole video about this, Marcus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do feel like that, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, but anyway, Adam, we're watch guys. We are. What are you wearing today? Which watch? Watch I'm check. I'm not wearing a watch. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> love that. Uh, love that. It. And it's funny because you came to me and you were like, how do you feel about talking about watches on the podcast? And I was like, yeah, sure. I assumed you would wear a watch. I know. Uh, nice. Oh well. Okay. <laughs> well, Garmin has a new one, the Forerunner 165, which I actually kind of like. It's pretty sick. Uh, normally, Garmin watches are very expensive. Like the one that I wear right now is the Phoenix 7 Pro Sapphire Solar something addition nice. add seven more adjectives to the name and it's like eight hundred dollars which Dang. is ridiculous the All one right. that andrew's wearing is a thousand the apple watch ultra is 800 right okay i think mine's i think the one i'm using currently is 800 because it's not 800? the solar version oh, or okay but yeah the, yeah no, they're, they're watches are super expensive they're Jeez. crazy expensive that's the point so like this one that's coming out now is 249 for the regular forerunner 165 Whoa. Whoa. and 299 for the forerunner 165 music edition i think music's something uh-huh um basically the music the only difference is you can put music on it i don't know why that's like a separate thing but Okay, yeah. but either way, two forty nine, two ninety nine is really good. That's crazy. Yeah, and it has like a one point two inch AMOLED screen, which looks pretty good, uh, judging from the videos I've seen. Because I've watched a ton of YouTube videos about this thing, because all the reviews dropped yesterday. I think the biggest differentiator in a lot of Garmin watches to me are the ones that have the AMOLED screens yep. and don't. I agree. Um, they they just look so much better when they're AMOLED. Yeah, mine doesn't have. Is not. Yeah, I think it my does watch not. looks so much better. It does. Yeah. yeah thanks. Thanks for rubbing that in. <laughs> so so much better yours. Yeah. But yeah, so the AMOLED screen is actually like really nice, and then. This one, so the Forerunner series in general is Forerunners. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, and <laughs> oh, sorry. Hold on. Wait. 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 Uh oh. Oh no. Oh wait. wait. He's going for it. <laughs> nice. Uh, there like it second. is. My He's bad. getting it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's Forerunners. They have a bunch of different like uh, options. There's the nine nine sixty five. I think is one that they have. That's like the higher end one. Um, yeah, the Forerunner 965 is the most premium one they sell, and even that is $600. If you're not super into running, it's really unlikely that you're going to buy one of these like higher-end Garmin's or something. Yeah. Um, so this is pretty much, and I really like the uh, the marketing for this this watch as well because it says go ahead sign up for that race that's like the tagline for this watch and that is perfect for the kind of watch this is this is for someone that's like kind of into fitness but not really like they're debating running this year they're trying to get into it but they don't want to spend eight hundred dollars on a watch for something they might not even be doing in six months so this is like a way and not to say that two or three hundred dollars isn't expensive but like the alternatives are eight hundred you know like it's crazy so having the the features from the higher end Forerunner series come down to something at this price point, I think is super exciting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like this one has body battery, a Garmin coach. So they have like marathon training, race adaptive training. So basically that means that when you start a plan and you're like, oh, I want to do a half marathon in a couple of months, uh, it'll set up a schedule for you. And if you miss those like run dates, like I do all the time, it'll just automatically adjust the runs that you should be doing to like keep you on pace and be like, hey, I see you uh, skip the last couple runs. Like I'm going to adjust the rest of the schedule to keep you on track. Um, There's sleep tracking and a sleep score. But the killer feature, I think, is this thing has an 11 day battery life in smartwatch mode and and it has an AMOLED display. So that's like pretty insane. 11 days. Yeah. But that is uh, so there's a YouTuber, DC Rainmaker. Great, great freaking YouTuber. Uh, he reviews all these watches, but he, in his review, pointed out that he got consistently about four days, hmm. and that's with one or two workouts each day. Uh, I wonder if that's also with always on display. I've, it is. I found yeah. mine always on display. I can get like six days, but if I were to even just turn on like raise to wake, it could go up to like ten yeah. plus pretty easy. Yeah, it's crazy. And and two workouts a day, like that's a lot. Yeah. Well, not two workouts, one or two hours. Of workouts oh, each day. Although I'm sure oh. for the review, he probably did do like two workouts a day just wow. to like try out cycling and also running. But Here, here's my question: Does this thing have the same sort of ruggedness that the more no. expensive ones? No, no. So the the one that like I'm wearing, the one that Andrew's wearing, these have a kind of metal top to them. Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't even know if it's what it's called, so I don't want to say what kind of metal. But it the top is metal. The rest of it is like a a poly resin or something Mm -hmm. these are also plastic 
So the mm. glass screen is obviously glass, but the watch itself is more plastic, which isn't, um, that's more like a Forerunner line thing. That's not necessarily this model. Okay. All of the Forerunners are a lighter weight kind of resin. Yeah, the Forerunner stuff is very specifically for running. Yeah. Um, and like, uh, they, Marquez, they Marquez, don't... do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> I'm leaving in those pauses. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on it. But so, like, they definitely aren't trying to adapt to the like ruggedness of some of the more GPS focused, like hiking, trail running kind of things. Okay. Um, but that's why they can get the price down. And so, I think an AMOLED screen, it's not going to be any less durable than like an Apple Watch or a yeah, Galaxy exactly. Watch or something. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's not at the level of the super high end, like go camping or hiking or backpacking with sure. these. Mm -hmm. To me, I felt like that was the thing that would really set it apart from the Series 9, right? Like mm. if it could, if you could take it outdoors and not not have to worry about it. But I don't know, man, for that price, it's pretty good. Pretty cool. Not They're that also I... still pretty rugged. Like the Forerunners, you could still yeah. slap them around. Uh, you might like crack a screen if you hit a rock or something, but hopefully you're not. <laughs> I bet it's more durable than the curved edges on like an Apple Watch that are yeah. glass as well. That's mm. always like a worry I've had and I've yeah. cracked ones there before too. Mm. Basically, long story less long, this is like a pretty great entry level running watch, which is like rare. Cause they had another another version, I think it was the Forerunner 55 or 65, something like that, that was even cheaper, but it did not have any of these features. So like, it almost doesn't exist in my mind anymore. Like if someone says, I do want to get into Garmin, which watch do I get? I think this is the one. Cool. Yeah, cool, it's pretty cool, cool. cool. Well, in other tech news, Google just launched a free version of the rebranded Bard, AKA Gemini. The free version is called Gemma. Crazy. And that's all we have to say about that. But <laughs> OnePlus, <laughs> has a smartwatch. They're back, baby. They're back. OnePlus is back. First it was a keyboard, <laughs> now it's a watch. What are they gonna do next? Honestly, <laughs> do they have a netbook? No. <laughs> they did have a TV at one point, didn't they? Yes. It might be 2024 huh. and netbooks might be dead, but OnePlus. Bring it back. I feel like it's what's next. Uh, what's going on with this OnePlus watch? Uh, I wanna read, I wanna just start this off with reading what they said in the forum post, because okay. this, this is all from a forum post. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, they said, I am thrilled to share some truly exciting news with you. After a three year hiatus and a reflective pause following the OnePlus Watch 1, we are returning to the smartwatch scene with the OnePlus Watch 2. Brave. The OnePlus One, or the OnePlus Watch One, excuse me, uh, famously, not a great watch. Mm -hmm. uh, Marquez reviewed it, and I think your tagline was, they settled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you excited for the for the second version of this? Me personally? Yeah. I want to see it do better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, the first one... So Okay, so first of all, here's what we know about the new OnePlus watch. Uh, two colors, black steel and radiant steel, which is just black and silver. Mm -hmm. Estimated 100 hours of battery life. Okay. Which I don't doubt, seeing as the last one, Marquez, in your review, you said it lasted like a week, right? Before you had to throw it on the throw it on the charger. Yeah. But Whoa. the last one also did basically nothing. Ah. So I'm curious to see how they're going to get 100 hours while improving the watch, or if it still is going to do basically nothing. Uh, not a great sign. Also, the other thing we know is that it's going to be unveiled February 26th at MWC in Barcelona. And okay. it also has a new tagline. So the Garmin oh. one, I liked the tagline, like just do that race or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, this one is, they're changing it from flagship killer to ecosystem builder. Ecosystem yeah. builder. Like the watch will build you an ecosystem? I guess so. I don't know. It has a bad ring to it. Yeah. So. I get it. They're trying to add to like the ecosystem of OnePlus products, but flagship killer just hits so it's much harder so hard. than ecosystem yeah. builder. Well, that's like, not threatening Minecraft, at all. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it went from flagship killer, which was like, ooh, like I'm paying attention to what you have to say now. Deadly. To ecosystem builder? That's like a slide on a deck somewhere. It's also, like a definitive <laughs> downgrade slogan. Yeah. yeah. Not great. Also, like a watch doesn't feel like something that builds an ecosystem. It's something that complements yeah. an ecosystem. That's another, yeah, that's a you good know? point. It's not the like building block of an ecosystem. It's something that you toss in after the ecosystem is built yeah. already. Because, no, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But based on the people I know, no one is going to buy, you know, a $200 smartwatch. And then it's like, okay, because I have this watch, I'm now going to get a $3,000 computer. <laughs> you know, it's it's usually the other way Maybe, around. Yeah. I, think it, I think you're right. But it's also interesting in the, the way that people fill out their ecosystem. Usually right. it starts with the phone. 
And then what is the second or third thing that you buy? And is that purchase directly impacted by the ecosystem? So like iPhone's the obvious one. Mm -hmm. I want to go buy earbuds. Okay. The obvious one is the ecosystem earbuds. And Apple's built out this gigantic ecosystem of, oh, you want a smartwatch? We got an ecosystem one. Oh, you want a tablet? We got an ecosystem one. Oh, you want a headset? We got an ecosystem one. And I think OnePlus is trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have a OnePlus phone? Great. You want a smartwatch? Here We're going to go. build out our ecosystem a little bit. We got a tablet. We've got other stuff. So wouldn't so, the the phone be the ecosystem builder? I think the phone is the hub. Yeah. And all the things around it are ecosystem builders. Okay. Really? Okay. That's how yeah. it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> You're like totally in the Apple ecosystem, right? Uh, right now. I mean, you're, I guess you're wearing like this a Garmin. Garmin watch. Yeah, I have a Garmin watch and I use Windows at home. But at oh, work, it's all ew. Apple stuff. <laughs> What do you mean? What? Windows Use is great. Windows at home? E the world uses Windows, Ellis. <laughs> Adam and I chat on the MSN Messenger when we're at home. No, you don't. <laughs> no one chats on MSN Messenger. Not at uh, I'm trying. Well, I was just thinking because I feel like I actually might have. I, I went at sort of a zigzag route through the Apple ecosystem, mm -hmm. I think. I Because I switched to Mac in middle school. Never looked back. Never, ever, even once looked back. <laughs> um, switched to Apple in middle school. Got an iPhone, switched off of Android in high school. Wait, so you had an Android phone? I thought that your first phone was iPhone. No, 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 no. Oh, no, what no, was no. your first Android phone? My first Android phone, I had I had two Android phones. The first one was a Samsung with a slide-out keyboard, a slide-out horizontal keyboard. Nice. I, I can't remember what it was called. Doesn't matter. The second <laughs> one was a Kyocera Rise. That thing okay. rocked. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I still have the Kyocera Rise. That was really fun. Nice. Um, and then I got a 4S. Mm. Um, the good one. Yeah, but then I, it was like a long time. And then I think it went AirPods, then iPad. And then I started borrowing an Apple Watch from here, but I still haven't owned one. I don't know. Maybe that's not that weird. Maybe that was like a totally boring story. We'll just cut from the podcast. <laughs> um, what an exhilarating story, Ellis. Yeah. Wow. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, we've got more great news coming up. Yeah. But first and it feels so weird to say this you got to do the pause you got to do the pause i i don't even know because i'm the <laughs> this is like my thing yeah you know like it, and now i've given it to someone else You've given up the power <laughs> all right it's time for trivia oh, oh my god this, this is, is weird. weird nailed it you better not mess this up <laughs> it's me sorry <laughs> I'm doing the first trivia question. What a smooth transition between Amazing. Marquez finding the button. Um, all right, so Garmin, the company we just talked about, is most famously known for fitness tracking devices like smartwatches. Mm -hmm. Oh, I already know the answer. Oh, GPS is, you don't even need to finish the question. Created their name by combining the name of their two founders, Gary Burrell oh. and Min H. Cow. I did not see that. Okay, this is not what Min I thought. Min H. Cow? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but okay. Min H. K. A. O. Okay. okay. But when they first started in 1989 selling a $2,500 GPS device, they went by a different name that also combines two words this time. What was the original company name? Oh. <laughs> you know how proud I am that you thought you knew it and I got the hey. curveball well, in there? Like, because that happens all the time to me. Where yeah. I'm like, I know this, I know this. And then you say what I know out loud. And I'm like, damn, it's yeah. going deeper. I uh, thought, because I found out a few months ago that Garmin also does uh flight control panels for mm -hmm. fighter jets and they sell really really expensive military grade smart watches that, military that contracts, plug yeah. in with those flight decks um but so yeah that's not not where I, that's right that's crazy okay. uh, all right well answers we're at the end answers at the end wow now we're saying this oh, part so this crazy. is so crazy uh we'll be right back This episode is brought to you by Visible Wireless. Okay, so Visible Wireless is one of our partners and they're pretty great. They asked me to talk about why Visible might not be interesting for you. Pretty refreshing, right? So Visible's base plan with unlimited 5G data on Verizon's network for 25 bucks a month works great for lots of people, so what's not to love? Well, they're all digital, so you do everything from managing your plan to getting customer service right in their app. So if you love to handle everything without ever needing to talk to a human in a store, Visible's great. But if you need to shop for a new phone in person, Visible probably isn't for you. Someone like Verizon might be a better choice. 
If you want your wireless bundled with a bunch of extra stuff, don't switch to Visible. But heads up, you're gonna have to pay for that extra stuff. Visible is focused on the wireless part of wireless. So if you want more than unlimited 5G data from your wireless plan and to pay top dollar for it, then by all means, don't switch to Visible. Don't even go to visible.com to learn more. You get it. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see visible.com. Okay, welcome back. Since David is not here, I thought I'd take this opportunity to yell from the mountaintops about how much better every other messaging service is besides Telegram. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is, this is anti-Telegram. This is an anti... Well, no, Telegram's fine. It's an anti-David loving Telegram segment. <laughs> David on the plane listening to this right now when this is out, he's f fuming already. He, he hasn't even heard it. He's texting me like, <laughs> you mo... <laughs> Uh, so basically, there's a bunch of updates to a bunch of different messaging services, and we're just going to kind of list through them because some of them are pretty crazy. So for the first one, Signal adds usernames. Crazy. Wild. Yes. Wait, Thank what you. did they have before? Just phone numbers. So before, you had to like know someone's phone number if you wanted to contact them through Signal. Uh... Now there's a username. Uh, Add in the obligatory David. Telegram's had that forever. But yes, oh now God. Signal has it too. Um, basically, it's a username that you can use to initiate a message with other people. Once you start the message, then they can see your phone number if they have it in their contacts already. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, they do not see your phone number. Cool. The username is also not displayed in the chat. So, like, if you pick, I don't know, Ellis the God 23. Ellis the God. <laughs> Charlamellis the God. <laughs> the God. Then they'll see that when they want to start a message with you. Okay. But then after that, once you start talking with them, it'll just say Ellis Roman or whatever you put as your oh. name in Signal. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So like a lot of like reporters do this where mm -hmm. they will put it in their bio and be like, if you have a tip, hit me up on Signal 943-228-9666. Okay. But now you can just have your username and just be like, hit me up. Let me know what you want to what cool. you want to talk about. Cool. I don't use any of these apps. <laughs> well, no, you use one of them. Which one? iMessage. Yeah, I mean, I, I use I use iMessage. We're okay. gonna, we're gonna get to that. Yeah, we'll get there's to some that juicy one. stuff there. But I don't use any of the like third party encryption. Gotcha. Messaging apps. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, WhatsApp does not have this feature, to my knowledge, and iMessage doesn't either, which is pretty cool. So Telegram and Signal are the only two right now. Well, I, I shouldn't say only two. There's probably a million, but the main two that have uh, usernames where you can start that contact. So that's pretty dope. That's dope. Um, I guess, can you do this with iMessage if you make a fake email and just talk to people through your iMessage email account? Because can't you do that? Yeah, you can do that. You can do that, right? I've like, definitely gotten like... Yeah, okay. Yeah. So never mind. So I, you can do it with iMessage if you create a fake email. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the time when pe when I get like fake... Spammers. Yeah, or like, like a fake USPS text over iMessage has got some like ridiculous mm. email attached to it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next on the list is WhatsApp. They added new features literally this morning, right before running in here. Thank God it wasn't a crazy update because we had like four minutes to digest this. I know. But basically there's four new text markdown style syntax formatting options. You can now do bulleted list, numbered list, block quotes, and inline code in your WhatsApp. I kind of like blog that though. Posting your blog in your WhatsApp Yeah, message. literally. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, actually, that's not too far off from what I'm sure they're hoping people will use this for because they have those like communities and you can kind of post blog posts in WhatsApp, oddly enough. So I'm sure that's probably a part of it. No, that's cool. I, I there, you know, I, my, yes, I just think you can tell a lot of really <laughs> funny jokes with these things. You know what I mean? I'm weird. Like bullet or like bullet point list sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'd be excited for that, but like, I'm like, Oh, I would like to do yeah. that. There's so many times where I try and send people things like, these are a couple options. Someone just asked me the other day, like, what are some different TVs you'd like to use? It'd be so much easier mm. or like if I could just put out some, a couple different companies rather than just comma. And then when they go to look at it quickly later, there's mm. just a bullet point list. The beauty of Markdown, yeah. baby. Or what if we were texting each other and you were like, Ellis, do you want to go get dinner here? And then I responded with an inline comment <laughs> that just said, no, you suck. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I think so, anyway. That happened in real life, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last iMessage, or the last messaging update is iMessage. Which adds, they, iMessage added quantum encryption, which 
mm. is crazy. I barely under I understand <laughs> how like you can you can get prime numbers easier when you have qubits and superpositions and stuff like that. That's more than I understand. So you're uh, way ahead of me. I don't I don't understand exactly how it worked. The the thing that really struck me about this announcement, well, two things. The first is that Apple really seemed to want to hammer home that um, this protects against future quantum computer mm. capabilities. Like even if your hash or your password gets scraped now and then five years from now a, a new quantum computer gets invented and distributed it still can't be i don't know how they protect against the future apple is doing some weird time cop yeah. stuff time um, cop. <laughs> but they did put a fun this is the other thing they did put a really fun apple graphic yeah <laughs> in this announcement classic apple they just went out of their way to dunk on like every other messaging app it's so funny um i'd also never heard of viber that's a new one for me. You heard of Viber? You guys, you yeah. guys vibing? Viber was back in the day. I don't use it, but it's another one I've heard of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they released this graphic where it kind of shows the different levels of encryption. So they have classical cryptography, which is level zero and level one, which is no end to end encryption and end to end encryption by default, respectively. Then they have post quantum cryptography, PQC, which has level two, which includes PQXDH, which is Signal's quantum protocol that they released a couple of months ago. Um, and then they have all by themselves, far off to the right, level three, PQC key establishment plus ongoing PQC rekeying. We were talking about this before we recorded. I half feel like Apple invented these <laughs> levels. These levels. Are you okay? So, All right, we're so back. Sorry that about, happened. Yeah, sorry about that. For audio listeners, um, a light just fell and missed Adam's head by like one inch. Oh my um, god! Yeah, <laughs> jeez. I don't know if that means the spirit. The spirits are angry that we're hosting the podcast, or <laughs> that the spirits are happy we're hosting the podcast and like spared you. Oh, that's a very good point. Um, I. I blame Marquez. <laughs> <laughs> I, was to, I was like looking for the heads up button. Like, wait, wait, where is it? What's the heads up button? But I, I don't think we have that much more to say about the Apple cryptography thing. Honestly, the last time we talked about cryptography, uh, the the people on Twitter and in the comments did a really great job of explaining the difference between end to end mm -hmm. encryption and uh, uh, so. Yeah, more of the story. Apple has a new quantum encryption standard that they're bringing to iMessage. Yeah. So now Apple and Signal are the two that have quantum computing encryption. And we have to wait for an equally snarky graphic by Signal. Oh, which, I'm ready uh, for it. Yeah, yes. I would, sorry, I would like to point out something about this graphic. Totally, totally. Go for it. They put iMessage at the top with uh, level three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But until they add RCS support, <laughs> if you use iMessage, and you text someone with an Android phone, that is level zero, unencrypted SMS. Quantum encryption came before RCS. Just saying. How does that make you feel? We're still waiting for that RCS support. <laughs> so I want to say that iMessage is both at the highest and lowest levels, depending on who you're texting. That, that's by design, is hilarious. It's your fault for having friends with Androids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get them an iPhone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, buy it. Buy all your mom and your friends an iPhone. Crazy. Buy them all iPhones. Oh my God. AI Reddit training deal. Adam, what's that? Reddit, the social media app, <laughs> <laughs> last year blocked off access to their APIs for third party developers, started a whole kerfuffle, who blah, blah. Uh, we spoke about it here in the podcast. That's part of how we met Christian Selig, actually, where we spoke about at the top of the top of the episode. Now they have a new deal that they're working on where with an undisclosed company, they will allow them to scrape Reddit data for 60 million a year, which is crazy. That's a lot of money. 60 million a year. Yes. Yeah. Wait, so what does that mean with an undisclosed company? So they didn't say who the company is. This was, they were telling their investors, I, I believe. Oh, but like, so, but this company is paying them 60 million. Yep. It's not like, it's not like that's the price. Like I couldn't go up to Reddit with 60 million and be like, I want to scrape. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> to the highest bidder. Let's find out. Uh, so I just found that really interesting because this is this was part of their plan from the start. It yeah. was like, I think the AI thing, they probably, well, I don't know, maybe they did see it coming. I don't think a lot of people saw this boom coming, but they definitely wanted to keep their data. They realized how valuable that Reddit data was. So by blocking off third-party access last year, 
dealing with the whole blowback and everything that when that happened with the protests and all that stuff now they're gonna api or not api ipo ipo thank yeah. you so many freaking acronyms they're gonna ipo which they've been saying they're gonna do since 2021 or something or 2020 but now they're actually knock on wood i don't have wood around me gonna do it so now they're going to be scraping or letting people scrape their Reddit data, which is really interesting. I feel like the moral of the story is just know that Reddit just cares about IPOing and making money now and doesn't give a shit about any of its users, except for all of the stuff that they post on there that now they can scrape for data for AI. And except for the top 75,000 of its biggest users, which Wall Street Journal reported this morning that they're planning to save some of their IPO stock for those users. cool they've been trying to ipo for three years i yep. don't know it's such a show over there also yeah. like you know they i'm looking here online and it seems like last year they had a total revenue of like 800 million dollars about that mm-hmm. um to just like give it to all of your fans and supporters and then the reward being 60 million dollars which is a lot of money but not for like a reddit sized company it's like damn bro well that's 60 million a year I know, but it's like, yeah. like, like you gave all of those developers and like loyal people on your site the finger for 60 mil. It's like you yeah. couldn't even crack 100 mil. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Damn, that unnamed company, that, no wonder the company's unnamed. They, they don't, don't want to, they don't want to out who f- dogged them. Like, <laughs> for, I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, that's what I take away from this. Like, like to do, to, to, to just 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 give it mm-hmm. to all the people who support you for for 60 mil. Well, they're going to give some money back to 75,000 of those top users who I don't know who's still there because the like most excited, loyal Reddit users, I feel like left or like stopped using it in that way. That's they? what I was going to ask. Do you think so? Obviously, we have our stance on it mm-hmm. and us being particularly concerned about privacy. What fraction of actual because 800, however many million people use Reddit every month, How? what fraction of those people actually care enough to stop using Reddit? Because remember we talked yeah. about this last time? Yeah. You're upsetting the most important 10% of your audience, yep. and let's say you leave them, you still have 90% of the people. Yeah. yeah. That well, your, still be true. your answer is that in 2023, the revenue was up 20%. <laughs> yeah, like listen, I think uh, like I hate what they did with it. Uh, Reddit's still doing absolutely fine, and I'm sure to them it doesn't make a difference. I would argue that probably a lot of people moderating subs are not as well versed as the old moderators used to be who left. Um, I mean, we gave up the MKBHD subreddit to just like it's just an unofficial subreddit now because we didn't feel like dealing with it anymore. But they're fine. I always knew they were gonna be fine, but it doesn't mean they didn't give a giant middle finger to yeah. all their like really loyal users. And again, they were a web-based pl- uh, website that didn't have an official app until they bought a third-party app, called it the official app. It is still <laughs> terrible, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It is an awful app. Yeah. And then just said, oh, yeah, everyone. So, yeah. Is, <laughs> is there like a Reddit like competitor? Like, is there another site that you can compare to Reddit that that yes, people could yes. even go to? And no. Yeah. There's, it's the same thing as like the Twitter competitor. There's a competitor. Yes. Does anyone give a shit about it? No. I don't know if it still exists anymore, but I funny feels like it was comparable. To no, Reddit. it was not. No. I funny? no. Why not? Wasn't I, I mean there were no just like a random picture of the day that uh, like a no, 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 that no, no, no. just stole it, pictures. It was from sort of time. I mean I never used it. It was more of a Gen Z thing that I was a part of. But my little brother used it. iFunny has been around for a very no no, no. Long well time. that's what I'm saying. It's like oh. when I you know when my brother was like nine and had like a whatever device he had like iFunny was the app for him and his it, friends. So it was like just the r slash funny subreddit. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I think there's like a likes and points. I don't know. Uh, I should um, I should shut my mouth before the <laughs> iFunny community comes Lemmy, after me. Lemmy yeah, I was going to say the Lemmy. one that everybody Lemmy, talks yeah. about potentially being the alternative, Lemmy. but never heard of it. Yeah, I've never yeah, heard of it. Yeah, it's an idea. open so source right. one. You only hear about it when you hear about people being mad oh, at Reddit. Is it is it <laughs> on activity <laughs> pub? I don't know if it's that was a joke. Code. That was a that was oh. a really bad joke. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Nice, <laughs> nice, getting it. All right, you know how who else has billions of dollars? <sighs> Walmart, Walmart, baby. <laughs> oh man. Okay, Walmart. <laughs> thank you, that thank you. Great. Walmart <laughs> buys Vizio. Um, 
Okay, so before we launch into this, I just want to say a lot of the cool stuff we're about to say in this story came from some really good reporting in The Atlantic by Justin Pott and also some Associated Press reporting that I found in the San Diego Union Tribune. Just wanted to lay some credit where it's due. Get all our sources. So for everyone listening, when Ellis and I found out that we were going to be doing this, we went crazy just fact checking everything we put in the doc three times. I know. Because we were so nervous. Turns out it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's terrifying. So there's know. the sources. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. And uh, just like really great research and reporting by them. But yeah. um, OK, first of all, two point three billion. Jordan. Jordan. Uh, second of all, that's so much money. That's like a ton of money, That's two point three billion, and uh, and I wanted to, you know, it makes you think because Vizio is a budget TV manufacturer, right? And it's not like they have like skirted around and found this market as a budget TV. Like they have made budget TVs since the beginning. I don't really think they've gone into too many other product categories, too mm -hmm. many other markets. Um, Sound bars, maybe? I don't even know. I don't, yeah, but so this is like a weird time to enter the budget TV market, right? Uh, and that's because TVs are like ridiculously cheap right now. Un some are free. Exactly. They're, they're <laughs> so cheap that you can literally get some for free. And this is this is a new thing. Like if you're if you're 10 years old, like I don't know why you're listening to the Waveform podcast, but if you are 10 years old, Welcome. then you don't remember that. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, TVs were really expensive. Uh, did you guys ever play Club Penguin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, right? you did? Okay, well, you, you did? asked me the other yeah. day, and I was like, I feel Do like that's a Do you remember what game. one of the most expensive furniture items in Club <laughs> Penguin was? <laughs> it was the big screen TV. That was 5,000 <laughs> coins. You could get, I'm pretty sure, I don't, someone will have to price check this, but I'm pretty sure you could get an entire LED dance floor in your igloo for about the same price as a single television. Oh, wait, let me fact check this. Yeah, one. fact check that. <laughs> um... <laughs> what it is worth noting that, and this I did fact check. Okay, <laughs> this I did fact check that a puffle in Club Penguin was one sixth of the price of a TV. You could purchase literal flesh for less than that of a TV. Okay. Anyway, TVs are cheap for a few reasons right now. One is uh, they completely change the manufacturing process. They do use this thing called mother glass, where they start with like a big giant glass sheet and they can stamp multiple displays out of wow, that. That's crazy. So there's a lot less waste, which is great. Also, TVs have a lot of competition from the bottom side mm. of the price equation because uh, companies like TCL and Hisense can make really cheap TVs that are still really decent Decent, and that forces the expensive guys like LG and Samsung to effectively lower them prices to compete. But, but the big reason TVs are so cheap right now, and this is something people don't think about a lot, is because they scrape an unbelievable amount of data from yep. you. And that's how they make the money back. Just a frankly unbelievable amount of data. Um, and that's why, according to this blog called Carpe Diem, which does like financial graphs and stuff like that, uh, TVs have decreased by an average of 97% since the year 2000. <laughs> that's right, 97%. Um, and uh, another little fun fact I threw in here that's related is that Roku, a company that also makes really cheap TVs, usually partnered with other people, makes four to five times as much revenue off of what they call a uh, platform. Uh, like platform. Platform. Yeah, so that's like ads on the Roku channel, licensing out the operating system, mm -hmm. this, that, this, that, than they do on their actual devices. So it's way, way, way more profitable to be in the data game when it comes to TVs than it is to... Which is why the telly is completely free and exactly. I'm still waiting for mine. Yeah, where is it? <laughs> I'm thinking about something right now. Yeah. They What's on your mind? They scrape a lot of data. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no. Oh. Find it. Find it. Whoops. One. No. No. Left. Top left. I mean, that's a lot of smarts, but also a lot of data. Yeah. Nice. But also, <laughs> uh, is that even like okay? What kind of data would a TV scrape from from me? Oh, every let's say it knows everything I watch. Yeah, and when you watch it, and when I watch it, and when I turn the TV on and off. Do you have kids? Yeah. Do you have a partner? Are you alone? Do you think they know that? Yes. Or do they infer that from the data? Do you watch Love Island at 8.30 p.m. two nights a week? You have a girlfriend. <laughs> that's exa Damn, that's good. Damn, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Let's say, so 
Is any of that information that they're scraping particularly sensitive? Well, no, there's different kinds of data. So there's like PPI, which is personally, ident or PII, personally identifiable information, and right. then PII2, something like that. I forgot, everyone's gonna yell at me. I know, they exist. But I think it's that first kind of data that is not exactly like your social security and everything like that. Right. It's just regular data, where you live, what time are you watching these things? Do you are you home all day? Do you work from home? Th that kind of stuff. Yeah, because I think about like sensitive data. I think about like what I buy, what I what I spend money on, my tax, like the where I live and things like that. And uh, obviously that stuff, like a browser would know, or like a someone you buy a product from would know. Mm -hmm. But the TV, it's like I don't really mind if anyone knows how much TV I watch or where or how much it's on or any of that mm -hmm. stuff. Well, it's not exactly, it's not, I think the crazy part is that because of your habits, uh, like because of your viewing habits, then they're able to infer other things that you may care about. That's, That's true. really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Also, they'll know like what services you subscribe to, they'll know how you use them. And I think, yeah, they can use that to infer a lot of purchasing data. And then also don't remember, uh, don't forget, um, you get served ads on uh, on these platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and that I think is the big reason that, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. I sort of trail off I was just gonna say, it's kind of an interesting point to think about in any types of like scraping data is like, there are plenty of people who are just like, I don't really give a damn about what it is because a lot of it's marketing or, or whatever. And there are people who don't care as much and there's people who care more. I mean, the Reddit stuff and like scraping it for AI is like, I don't really care as much about what I post on there. It's just more of like they're screwing the people over and like making a bunch of money off mm -hmm. of it. But like, yeah, it's very clearly this stuff is there scraping your data. And that's how everyone's making money these days. Yeah, pretty much. But do you remember the story of how Target figured out that the girl was pregnant before her father? That was all from just data. Yeah. But advertising stuff. Arguably, Target would know much more sensitive information about you than, than your TV. Yeah, the they did Target that just knows, off of buying decisions. So Target knows where you live. Target knows when you bought things, what you bought. Your, your TV knows where you live. Yeah, for sure. sure. They know, yeah, they right. know where I live, but they don't know what I bought, when I bought it, and in the frequency that I started buying it more. They might see that I didn't skip a certain ad and mm -hmm. could maybe think about that a little more, but I just... I feel like there's levels to like how important the data is. Yeah. And this is a little bit underneath the one that I am okay. most curious about. Do you know what would bump up Target's uh, ways to scrape data? If they bought a television company and then scraped all the data Ooh. from that. Yeah. I feel like you just went into the point of where Walmart was like, how do I get more data? Yeah. It's let's buy a TV company. Yep. So it's it's actually not just about Walmart getting more data. It's about Walmart leveraging that data. So Walmart has this platform that doesn't get brought up very much that's called Walmart Connect. You guys ever heard of this? Mm -mm. Nope. Exactly. So Walmart Connect is sort of like Ooh. Spotify for all this time. But <laughs> teach me a thing. It's for brands who sell things at Walmart. So, so if you're like a brand or a seller, you can go into your Walmart Connect and you can buy placements on the Walmart homepage. Uh, you can buy ads as part of Walmart's ad stuff. And soon, because Vizio has this whole TV streaming uh, ecosystem, they'll be able to plug all of those ad spots and all of that demographic data into what they describe as a closed loop ecosystem. That's a big part mm. of the Walmart Connect um, selling point to sellers, is that not only do you give them money and they place ads, but then they give you also Walmart customer specific feedback, which you can then use to do a stronger campaign and create the closed loop. And this is huge because Vizio, according to their last shareholder thing, had uh, 500 advertising partners. Um, 500? 500 Sheesh. advertising partners, which means all of those partners are now partners with Walmart. Wow. I guess it's kind of similar to like Amazon in a way, mm -hmm. where if you buy enough stuff from Amazon, Amazon, they know a lot about you. And then if you're an advertiser who wants to sell something and you want to get it in front of the right people, boy, does Amazon know how to get it in front of the right people. And Walmart is that big and they kind of have the same system going on where it's like, all right, yes, we have physical stores, but trust me, we know a lot about how to get the right product in front of the right people. And Vizio, boy, do they have advertisers that yep. want to get in front of the right people and vice versa. They have a bunch of information and we can use that information. So it, it checks out. 
Mm-hmm. It now, makes sense. And, it, and I think it puts a really cool spin on some of the stories we've heard over the past year with Amazon and Netflix adding ads to their user experience. Mm. It's not just so they can make a few bucks sell. I mean, I'm sure it is so they can make a few bucks here and there with it's ad time. It's about the bucks. But it's, it's about turning into a business that is leveraging your data, that is uh, doing targeted ads, that is effectively an advertising company. It's, it's almost like they're taking a page out of Google's mm-hmm. book. Um, in a really interesting... Who's way. also a ruthless advertiser that you never think about. Yeah. Well, I think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <fair>. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this story, I just thought this story was cool. It it it, it combines yeah. a bunch of different weird things about the time we live in. I also just want to say, um, assuming you're not afraid or freaked out by the data being collected about you, um, this is a great time to buy a TV. <laughs> it just it just is like like I I don't know if the, the gravy train's going to keep going yeah. and for how long and I'm not saying like go out and replace your TV we should all be trying harder to make our electronics last longer mm. but that being said it's just a great it's a it, we live they're in the, so cheap they're so cheap it's 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 dope well at least here they are I don't know about in other countries but in the U.S., they're very cheap. That's true. I, yeah. I would say that. they're commoditized to the level of the smartphone. Yeah. Literally. Probably yeah. more so. Uh, speaking of ads, we should get to some after we do the next trivia question. You nailed it. There it is. All right. All right. Oh, no. I've been waiting so <laughs> for this moment. <sighs> if you knew, you'd only have one opportunity. <laughs> I don't even remember the last question. Damn, okay. I got to think. All right, so we've been talking a lot about Reddit, uh, data, social media, etc. Reddit, uh, according to Statista, has 800 plus million monthly active users. Oh, no, he went into Statista. Yeah, well, that's that is, a wrap. That is a lot of users and a lot million. of data that they generate in that. Really? That's a lot of users, smarts, but also a lot of data. Nice. Well, does that make them like one of the biggest social media platforms in the Red has 800 million? 800 million monthly active users. I, you're right, Ellis. That does make them. I knew it. I was about to Google it, and I was like, wait, I probably shouldn't Google that this. That does make them <laughs> one of the largest social media apps oh, no. or uh, services in the world. But it doesn't even crack the top five. No. Really? Really? 800 million? Name the top three. Okay, oh. wait, 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 wait. How many of them do I have to live in China to use? <laughs> Zero. No. What? Are they all owned by one company? No further questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Producer Forum podcast with Ellis and Adam. Official name. Official name ch- change. Trademark. Official name change, trademark. Yep. Uh, we have some Apple news, though. Yeah, this is an entire, well, not entirely, but a big Apple section. Big Apple section. Um, first, Apple Music monthly replay. It's like Spotify Rewind. but no, Spotify Wrapped. It's like Spotify Wrapped, but every month. Too much. Do you think so? It's too much. I have been listening to pretty much two albums since mm-hmm. the year started. I've been on this like, serious two-album kick. Yeah. So it would just tell me how much I listen to those two albums. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, which would be kind of interesting, but... I don't know. I could be wrong, but my, personally, my listening habits don't change that much month to month. Mm-hmm. I like the yearly recap because it's a the year is long. My winter mood, my summer mood, my fall mood. I feel like doing it every month. I'm just never going to check this. Like, I don't care. I'll wait till the end of the year. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. It, I mean, we saw it also like the Spotify wrapped has a lot of really interesting, fun little mm-hmm. data and they'll make your like aura or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is not that. This is just like you listen to this song for this many minutes. Um, so yeah. no complaints, no notes. I don't know. Yeah. Is, what What are the two albums you've been listening to this year? Uh, let me let me see. While you do that, I uh, want to do a quick interjection. And that's because... Uh, Adam and I drive home together sometimes. Carpool, save the environment. And on our drive home, we've discovered we really, really like listening to this radio station in Jersey City, 91.1 WFMU. Uh, So if you live in the Jersey City area, or I think the transmission makes it all the way to Brooklyn. Um, So anywhere in the the New York, the New York City general area, check out 91.1 FM. There's like always something good 
on. Always. We've it's found. so good. Um, but the two albums I've been listening to, and uh, I'm the host. I can talk about whatever I want this Oh, week. let's go. Um, I've been listening to Andy Schaff's Norm, terrific album. And I've been listening to the compilation of Mon- Live at Montreux Jazz Festival, Nina Simone. You would. Record. Nice. Both terrific. Uh, I don't need to know how much I've listened <laughs> yeah. to it, though. Uh, what about you? I've been doing Insano by Kid Cudi. Insano. Okay. Insano. Nice. Great album. And Creatures of Habit by Kilcho, which is a random indie band. Uh, really cool, good. Cool. Cool. You guys want to shout out some music? Daft Punk. No, but I'm open. I'm opening <laughs> up my uh, replay for February right now. Oh, oh, yeah. Wild Mark has. I uh, should Wait, say. Wait, you use Apple Music? Not much. Oh, so okay. That's, <laughs> so that's funny. I only use it in Vision Pro. <laughs> so it's going to be real limited. And you're you're looking at this replay in the Apple Music app, right? Uh, it brings you to a website and then kicks you out to the web apps. So exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes. For some reason, Apple Music Replay can only be looked at in the browser. Don't know why. Wait, does Spotify wrap the same? No, it is on no, the phone, right? No, it's yeah. A, yeah, it's, you can do it in, in the desktop and the mobile app, but okay. I don't... Yeah, that's the thing. They just only do it in the browser, which so Mar- is fine. Marquez, what were you listening to in Division Pro? Uh, so I, I get to the part where it says, uh, this is your replay, jump in. So I click jump in, and it's like, your replay is still in progress. Check back in early March. Oh, that's for February. It doesn't give you a January one? I think there's a January button. It says he button. didn't listen to anything in January. I didn't listen to uh, uh, Okay. Wow. Well. Big totally letdown. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> in other Apple news, there's an Apple sports app. Now. Literally got launched this morning. Yeah. Huh. And it's basically... Just a like score aggregator is what it seems like, but and this is one thing we were talking about bef- mm-hmm. like in before we were recording. Um, if you open up the app, actually, let me open it up right now just to make sure so I don't get this wrong. But if you open up the app, it gives you the game that's upcoming. So and if you click that game, the very first thing is betting odds on the game. Oh, <laughs> oh. no stats. No stats about players or anything like that. Just betting odds, no. Wait, which is it even have stats. No, it does if you like cl- click into it, but it's no. more like the first thing it gives you is the betting odds, which I found very interesting. Uh, look, if you sports, if you if you daily fantasy or whatever the kids are calling it these days, like <laughs> uh, no shade, you know what I mean. I get it; it's fun, but it's also like Apple. What are you going to do? Porn next? <laughs> like, like, like this is like the least Apple thing I've ever. That's more what interested me. It's very unApple like to me to be like because that is like for adults. Betting is for adults. It's like and Apple is positioning itself always to be like safe for your kids. Like their whole yeah. iPad thing. Turn off the screen this and everything. And now it's just like nope. Here's some betting odds. This is unsavory but anyway besides that the app looks pretty cool no it does i'm excited <laughs> i'm excited to not have to google philadelphia 76ers three times a day yeah They're exactly losing. Yeah. <laughs> i know i know andrew <laughs> yeah so i signed up for the mls uh apple tv thing that they had oh. And I actually was really impressed with how they do the scoring and everything. Like, it pops up on the dynamic island. You can watch it there. It's all really cool. It also does that with uh, other teams that I follow. So, like, with Knicks, sometimes it'll just pop up on the screen, and I'll not even know there was a Knicks game that day, and I'll be able to, like, keep up with the score. One thing that, I mean, first of all, I should clarify, this is only available in the U.S., the U.K., and Canada. Why? I, I don't know. It's unfortunate. But... We are in the U.S., so I can talk about it. Um, It doesn't have as in-depth stats as something like, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, FOTMOB, F-O-T. As what? (laughs) Yeah, it's an app that specifically has crazy stats for soccer or football Uh, in the rest of the world. Okay. Um, It's actually the Apple Sports little dynamic island thing is faster than my TV. Like a couple weeks ago, (laughs) we were watching an Arsenal game. Shout out Arsenal. Um, And the... Um, we're watching the game, Jess is sitting next to me, and on my phone, I see Sokka scored. Sokka is like a good player. And I was like, oh! And Jess is looking like, what, what, what happened? And she's like looking at the TV and nothing happened yet. And it was a full like 11 seconds before what? he scored, which is crazy. Wow. So I have to like literally put my phone upside down when we're watching the game because otherwise it'll, it'll be spoiled. Okay, I'm on Fought Mob right now and you are not kidding, bro. Oh yeah, it's crazy. This is crazy. I have never heard of a stat xg on target and then in parentheses <laughs> x got i don't know what that means you know yeah. what this reminds me of what the, what you said earlier about how the number this is going to take away from the like the number of times you google who's mm-hmm. winning or what's happening in a game yeah 
it reminds me of Apple's weather app, which is, it's not as detailed as the most detailed weather apps, but boy, does this take away a lot of mm. Google searches. Yeah, for sure. Like if I just add my top three favorite teams, I Google the scores a lot. Like, yeah. yeah. Hey, who's winning the game? Who yep. won the game last night? Yeah. Who do they play next? When do they play this team? A lot of Google searches. It's yeah. all just there now. Something to keep in mind. Yeah, it's really smart. So some of the sports that they have currently are MLS, uh, NBA, NCAA basketball, men's and women's, NHL, Bundesliga, La Liga, Liga MX, Liga One, Premier League, Serie A, all the soccer ones. Well, I shouldn't say all the soccer ones. A lot of the soccer ones. Wow, you mean football? Ah, uh, yes, football. Sorry. Oh, come okay, on. excuse Do you mean me. Football? The f- football. There's also more leagues that are coming. Wait, there's not even football. Uh, because the seasons. <laughs> the se- well, that is a good question. Are they going to add football next season? Supposedly, they're going to add it. So the ones that where the season is over, they're it's not included in the press release, but it's upcoming mm. when the season starts again. So WNBA, uh, MLB, NFL, those are coming. Word. Yeah. So pretty cool overall. Like yeah. I just found it again very interesting that the betting odds was the first thing you see. Dude, it's wild. I'm not happy about that. Yeah. But you know, I don't get to decide the world we live in, and uh, that is what it is. I'm uh, just like, why are they getting a kickback from that? Do they get any money from betting apps doing great? Like, I mean, why have that at the top? Is it just one more Google search they can take away? Also, um, I didn't realize maybe. that the odds were like the same for all the books. That's like a great like point. I would assume different bookies set different odds, but I've never placed a sports bet, so I I don't even. Know. <laughs> if you like click the odds, does it take you to whoever's odds they are, Let's or like see. is yeah. it just Vegas odds? It actually just reaches into your pocket and takes your wallet. <laughs> it does not say because if it was specifically someone, I would say they're making advertising dollars off of that's fair whatever. But it doesn't say if I click it, nothing happens. There. Yeah, huh. ladies, if your boyfriend sports bets, ask him if he has restrictions. Because if you win a lot in those apps, they put restrictions on your account. They kick you off. If he says, no, I've never been restricted, he's losing your money. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Buddy Healed. <laughs> my guy's played four games for my Sixers. He's averaging 23 points. Yeah. This awesome. is now a basketball podcast. This is now a basketball You're podcast. Crazy. Psych! Adam, Adam, <laughs> ask who has him on the fantasy team. <sighs> you got Buddy Healed? Who's got Buddy Healed on the fantasy team, Marquez? Well, let me just check. Let me Marquez check. just picked him up. Let me just check. As Ellis was saying <laughs> that. See what that says? Be healed. No games. Oh. <laughs> no Wait, games today. It's all-star break. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I do, in fact, have Buddy Healed. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. What, pl- what place are you in in our fantasy league, Marquez? Top two. <laughs> but not one. Top two. <laughs> Top two. I'm half a point behind Alex. Oh, okay. no, you're okay. sorting wrong. That's No, it's, I... <laughs> you're sorting <laughs> wrong. I'm right behind Alex. Okay, but... <laughs> This is not totally a basketball podcast because last week we did not get the chance to talk about the stupid regular host somehow forgot to talk about <laughs> OpenAI Sora. So we're going to clean up the mess they left for us. Um, Wait till you see the mess of this producer's table. When we're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lights falling down. <laughs> um, OpenAI Sora. It's a text to video uh, AI. Yeah. Um, just want to say, uh, like, all the coverage I was reading about this were like, yo, like, this is the first to market. Like, this is here. Runway has had text-to-video for a while. You and Brandon always talk about yeah. Runway. What We don't just talk about it. We use it. Yeah, like, like we what use it professionally. specifically, like, it has this feature? It's It looks more diffusion-y, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> than the examples that... That uh, yeah <laughs> yeah Smith it looks looks a little more spaghetti y but um, no it's like it's much more of like well first let's talk about okay yeah the the announcement so on OpenAI's website they made this announcement for this new thing called Sora they are still red teaming it which I think means they're trying to have people do bad things with it so yeah it's like then, a security term yeah I, again we're not security guys as you could tell from our cryptography uh, quantum <laughs> computing segment here before I was almost killed by a light. Um, but it looks really good and the cool things that they're sort of like pushing forward as big features and these are things that I have found runway to sort of struggle with Mm -hmm. custom resolution. um, So you're not just locked into like 720 or 1080 or 4K. You can do lots of weird resolutions, which sounds small. But when it comes to machine learning is big. Like I I, I use this software called Touch Designer, which has some AI integrations. And 
I remember reading this whole thing about this uh, facial recognition, facial tracking AI that someone mm -hmm. built for it wouldn't work if you used a vertical webcam feed. Hmm. Same exact thing, but as soon as you change it from a, a horizontal to vertical thing, it just broke. But so yeah, uh, custom aspect ratios, custom resolutions, uh, it can do multiple figures and subjects really well. Um, Interesting. So it seems like it's pretty cool. The part that I found really cool was in the sort of like tech paper thing that they published alongside. And that was that um, they already have GPT, which we know is a transformer model. And they already have Dolly, which it <laughs> uh, Okay, I'm getting I'm getting a note from my producers here, folks. Live, live uh, coming in. Breaking news. Will Smith eating spaghetti. I'm assuming we're gonna cut to that clip right here. I I guess so. Um, does he make a sound in that video? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Does he? Boy. Well, it also came back because he did like a post recreating it in person. Yeah. Will Smith. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Will you didn't see Smith it? Yeah, he tweeted a it. video that said AI then or AI Instagram now, something. and it's just him redoing all of the scenes. And he like spaghetti. unhinges his jaw like a snake in the video, right? <laughs> well, no, it's the updated <laughs> AI that doesn't unhinge the jaw. It's not actually him no. violently eating spaghetti. It's, yeah. Okay, I gotta watch. It's this. just as crazy as you're so. imagining. Oh my god. But gosh. it's awesome. Um, that's a that's a win for Will Smith and his team, I think, right there. True. Like, there's a lot happening in his life and everything, but that was genius. <laughs> that was good. But, uh, but that was uh, good. it's interesting. So so GPT is a transformer model. That's what the T stands for. Dolly is a diffusion model. I'm pretty sure that's what the D in Dolly stands for. Sure. So, someone should double check that for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, they're saying that Sora is a uh, diffusion transformer or a transformer forming diffuser. It's like some combination of the two, oh, interesting. which is interesting, right? And and it took me a little bit to get it, but the gist of it is that transformers are really good at sequential understanding and mm -hmm. they can do this across really long sequences. And that's why ChatGPT can write you five paragraphs and the fifth paragraph still is related to the first paragraph. Uh, okay. Language tends to work sequ sequentially. Mm -hmm. um, Images do not work sequentially. They can have sequential elements in them, but they don't work sequentially. And that's why we use diffusion models uh, for a lot of image generation stuff. Mm -hmm. Diffusion models are really good at understanding spatial relationships and building these sort of complex relationship networks where there's no, there's not a linear sequence to it, but there is still a connection of ideas. Mm. A video is a bunch of images that don't have these sequential relationships, but then the the images are arranged sequentially. sequentially. Yeah. So to generate a video from nothing, you actually need to deploy both kinds of models uh, mm. in tandem with one another. And there's a bunch of really interesting stuff about how um, the sort of like token system that a lot of transformers use doesn't exactly work for video. You gotta use these sort of temporal tokens called patches. It's really interesting. I recommend, and this sounds silly, but this is actually what I did, reading the open AI paper with chat GPT in another window so you can get clarification <laughs> on stuff that's like a little too hard to understand. That's awesome. Um, but Did it lie to you? I, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. It seemed like everything that I was reading was I could sort of uh, fact check. I found this cool guy's blog. It's Jono, not, it's Jono with an H, J-O-H-N-O dot com. Just some random dude's blog. Not our Jono. Not our Jono, Got different it. Jono. I mean, unless Jono is like secretly an AI wizard. Um, but the thing that I'm really excited for with Sora is if they're able to develop like a platform for it in the same way that Runway mm. does. Because the Runway tool, you have like text to video, you also have image to video, you also have video to video, and the video to video is like really cool. Like mm. the example they have on their website, which I think illustrates really well, is someone set up a bunch of books standing up on a desk and then using and then filmed a shot and then using runway was able to turn those books into skyscrapers and have it be like a city fly through scene. Interesting. Um, then they also deploy the runway models to do things like automatic uh, background removal. If you've seen the Ellis versus AI video, the scene where like my hair is getting blown back and stuff that I we didn't use a green screen. It was just shot in a normal room. Oh, and I was then, there. And then we AI'd, yeah, oh, we I just know. AI'd the background out. We sprayed uh, water on your face. Yeah. <laughs> so I, if Sora is actually all that and as good as OpenAI wants us to think, 
I can't wait to see the platform that it is wrapped in. Thank you for letting me talk about that for 15 minutes straight, America. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> Quick fact checked. Dolly is not an acronym. It's so not an it's acronym. Not. We've definitely Ooh. talked about this before. It's just the combination of Salvador Dolly and Wally. Damn. Nice. Well, I will say, Andrew, now that you're back in the pod talking, um, you mentioned the other day something really good that now I see in every like Sora video, which is the keying on like random movements. So like if you watch a video, it, the camera will just like drift uh, to the right and then out of nowhere, just like really hard start drifting to the left. Mm -hmm. It's like they haven't learned how to ease in and out yet, which is interesting. Yeah, it felt like there was one specifically with a turtle mm -hmm. and it was kind of like panning on this turtle and then just kind of like went left. It looks like anyone who's ever video edited before the first time they add keyframe movements to something yeah. where there's not the smoothing, it's just like left, 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 right, 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 right. And yeah. like there's... It's almost smooth, but not smooth at the same time. I don't know. If you're into, if you know keyframes, you would see it in a second. It's just very interesting because some of these demos are insane. Like, it really replicates hand movement of like cameras that are holding or people holding cameras and the little jittery things that you get. But then, like, that one motion, it just really messes up every time. Yeah. I, I watched every single thing <laughs> I could find generated by Sora. And Did you like, with, you should do a video on this. Yeah, you should do a thing. <laughs> no, I, I had showed a bunch of them in the video that we made, but it is remarkable how good it's gotten so quickly and how, how well it is able to reproduce the parts of videos that you can ask for. Like some of the prompts are like, make this look like 35 millimeter film, make this look like uh, cartoonish or hyper super realistic. And it does that stuff too, which is yeah. crazy. And it does make me wonder, because now there's a meme of people tweeting real videos with made by a Sora. prompt of like, mm. handsome man walks down Broadway and it's just a video of themselves. And it's like, ha ha, made by <laughs> Sora, but it looks like you. But now it's like, how many, these videos really could just cross your Twitter timeline or Instagram timeline and just look like a real video. And yeah. you wouldn't know unless you watch it a third time or a fourth time, upon which it becomes very obvious when you see the things like mm -hmm. the keying or like the legs overlapping or the hands turning into seven or 12 fingers or whatever. But it's really fast. It's how scary. Fast it's like, like Mr. Cheddar. What? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Mr. Cheddar was this thing that spread around Twitter. It's it's this. It's really hilarious. It's a picture of a rat and wearing like a tuxedo jacket, I think, with his arms. He's standing on some carpet. He's rat sized. And he's holding out his arms like this. If you just Google Mr. Cheddar, I already put in the it'll chat. come up. It's not the first time we've looked at this yeah. on the podcast uh, also. I think. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we've talked about Mr. Cheddar before. But no it 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 no one knew it was a mid journey image until like months after. <laughs> it like like not that obviously it's not a real rat. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I feel like everything is believable where if it just crossed your timeline, but the a lot of times the giveaway is fingers. In a lot of these videos, it felt like the giveaway was like real world physics. It didn't quite mm. get like there was the one of the birthday cake where candles are blowing in different directions, which didn't make sense. And there turbulence was a, <laughs> inside your house. <laughs> and there was another one of the cat in the bed with the person, and the bed comes or the like blanket quilt comes from like behind her and just like flops over top of her with absolutely no movement. It's mm. just like the way it moves is just totally wrong. You know what it doesn't have? It doesn't have conservation of mass. Yeah. Mm. Like like the if you watch the iconic one everyone shared of the lady walking down the street in Tokyo. Walking down watch the her street. legs. They like merge and blend into each other over and over again and just swap back and forth. Mm. I don't know if you noticed that. Like I that did not. that dance move with your knees. Yeah. Except, yeah exactly. except her right leg becomes her left leg. Interesting. And then swaps back in. Like the, like you said, with the hands, like people will clap and the hands will just merge into one hand and then split back into two hands. Like that is weird. The blanket will like become more blanket and less blanket. And it looks physically realistic, but like also How where did that, that mass happen? come from yeah. and why is it moving? Weird stuff like that. It is weird. Am I the only one that's like terrified of this? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you too? Me. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. make videos. So <laughs> I'm pretty worried. <laughs> I'm terrified, but... I feel like I've gotten enough mileage out of the runway platform and it's helped me do work enough that I'm feeling excited. But you're not also trying to like de-establish a government or something, you know? 
<laughs> not that you know. Not of. that I know of. Not to my there, knowledge. It has. Gotten, Looking at you, Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've talked about how the the, vid- the photo making tools have gotten to the point where we can use them as a tool. So it's like, oh, it's not good enough to replace me. Great. But it is good enough to be used as a brainstorming tool or even like a rough draft tool for me. Yeah. And even to the point where like, I said this in the video, the the drone shot of Big Sur or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. I think that's good enough for, I think a lot of people looking for like B-roll. licensed footage who are mm-hmm. going to buy a drone shot of Big Sur. Like there's enough high resolution video of drone shots of Big Sur that AI just made another one for you. And you don't have to now hire that drone pilot to make your own or pay that license fee to get that footage that already exists just for your, you know, internal PowerPoint or whatever you're doing. Damn, Samsung was ahead of the game with their moon photos. What yeah. what, what <laughs> do we no think photo. uses more electricity? A drone flying into the sky over Big Sur and capturing or the server <laughs> farm that would generate <laughs> okay. a video? Have you ever flown a DJI drone? Those batteries yeah, I have. Clarifying go question, crazy. <laughs> how did the drone pilot get to the spot to take off? Ooh. Is his car electric? Did he take a plane? <laughs> did he fly? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's a mountain man. <laughs> he crawled there. He he never leaves. <laughs> <laughs> he's always there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This thing just kind of like it's really cool, but like the first thing when you were playing it for me when I walked in that morning, you were like, "Oh, look at these like new videos that dropped or whatever." Mm-hmm. I did not realize they were AI at all. I just really? I just thought you were watching videos. And like some of them, oh, again, if you really look like there's one with a guy reading a book. Remember you showed me that one? And like at one point the page just kind of like flips up like one of those yellow notepad books, but he's holding like a novel. So it's like the page wouldn't turn that way. So that's like a tell. But at first that was like 13 seconds into the video. There's a solid like nine seconds of just a dude reading a book. And I didn't think anything of it. And when I think about tech, like tech theoretically with people working on it gets better and better and better which means that the tell for us right now which is oh did you catch that with the hands or the legs or the book page the tells are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller Mm -hmm. theoretically right one would hope until it's completely indistinguishable from reality right which then what what happens which then you look around and you're like what about this one is this no 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 are we in an ai Did vision pro get that good that fast (laughs) yeah (laughs) Ellis Rovin's in this one. <laughs> so is Mr. Cheddar. Compu- oh, no. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think that's about... That about wraps it up, right? That yeah. about wraps it up. Yeah. Thank um, you guys for sticking with us. I, I think that's it. That's all we have to do, right? We don't have anything else to do. That's it. All right, bye. See you. Uh, no, see- no, 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 no. We have the thing. Oh, uh, the thing. Okay. Oh, my God. I get to write Grab on your the Grab your pens as well. Your uh, markers. Also, country of Belgium, I am not planning your demise. I, I'm sorry. Sounds that like was... what you would say if you were planning. It. No, 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 no. I love, I love Belgium. The Antwerp Zoo, I, a place I've never been. I've heard it's great. I was just gonna say, have you ever been to Belgium? No, nope. it's awesome. I'm sure I, I would love, love it. Sick. You would love it. Yeah, the chocolate flag is dope. Yeah, waffles, Antwerp, uh, Brussels. Yeah, lots to love about uh, the sprout. Flemish, <laughs> the sprout. great language. <laughs> anyway, sounds like you're trying to think about the trivia questions a little harder before we go belgium there (laughs) yeah (laughs) speaking of belgium (laughs) just kidding all right are you ready first question i'm so ready okay you've got the music for me yeah is it that one oh yeah it is that one (laughs) marcus is way better (laughs) all right we talked about garmin before damn they were named after the two co-founders gary burrell and min cow but they started in 1989 selling a $2,500 GPS device under a different name that combines two words. What is that name? Oh Good timing God. on the music there. Thank you. Thank you. I just realized how hard it is to think and talk at the same time. Now I know why you guys get so quiet. Okay. Two different words. <sighs> I want the name of the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm writing it down. Should do a score oh, update. Hold on, I'll potentially give you a hint here in case I did that. <laughs> yeah, poorly. sure. It is the abbreviate the two the abbreviation of two words. It's not two full words. No, no, okay. no. I, I figured right. that. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, Pencils up. Pencils up. Stop I, I, Andrew was talking. <laughs> I, it's cool. Okay. Concatenate Flip boys. There it is. Yeah. What'd we say? I wrote global mapping or GM. Damn. I put. Locu track, like nice. location tracking. 
That's what is really it? Satisfying. Pronav. Pronav. Oh dang! I've heard of that. That's what were the words? Sucks. A pro professional, professional navigation navigator. or navigation or navigator. Yeah, one I guess. of them. Damn. I tried to make it that is frustrating. reasonable to think of. <laughs> yeah, I kept yeah. mentioning the GPS device to try and think of navigation, maybe. Yeah. But. Damn. Okay, that was a good one. Price is right rules? My turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're only playing Delta. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, well, oh we God. still have a chance to get on the scoreboard. Yes. Okay. No oh, worries. Geez. This is the um, tough one. But this is a fun one. I think you. I think you have a chance at this one. So, on the subject of social media, Reddit, data, Reddit has 800 plus million monthly active users as of January 2023. Today, that doesn't even crack the top five social media websites by monthly active users. Name the top three. Uh, oh, top three. Oh, top I was three. Not... Do we have to name them I in order? I just want to say, okay. again, Marquez is just naturally good at everything that we do, and it's really <laughs> annoying sometimes. He has come into this producer role perfectly, <laughs> while I'm just here slugging along, hoping to not get drowned. Uh, okay, can we get one point per app? Sure. <laughs> wait, do they have to? Wait, do wait, they wait, have wait, to wait. be in order? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> do they have to be in order? They do not have to be in order. They oh, do not have to be in order. Okay. Oh. I only got two. Can okay. we get another? Yeah, extra points if they're in order. Oh. Okay. Okay. You already wrote three things. Yeah. So I'll give you one point per correct answer. All right. And a fourth bonus point if you have them in order. <gasps> That's four points. I can take the lead three. here. Top three, you could. Okay. Most used social I'm ready. media apps. I'm ready. Oh my god. active users. Okay. Sorry. I'll give you a fifth point if you name all of all them. Th of the top five. All of top five. Wait, you asked for top five. <laughs> I asked for top three. Yeah. And one point for correct answer. Five. Fifth point if you name all of them. All of what? Them. All every social media <laughs> every network. Social media. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We good? Yeah, I think so. Say it. All right, flip them, flip them, and read them. Oh, All right, man. I wrote one Facebook, two WhatsApp, three Instagram. Yeah. No. In order? Very, very, very close. Oh, oh wow. But unfortunately, you named. Well, I'll let Ellis go first. I okay. put one Facebook, two WhatsApp, three TikTok. So, here's the catch. Mm -hmm. There's a tie for third, and Adam, you named both of the ones in a tie for third. Oh, what's So I'm going to give you credit for naming the top three, even though that was technically How did 3A he... and 3B. Okay. Wait, what? He only named three apps. He named three. Yeah, so, so I missed named, number two. You named number one, Facebook, mm -hmm. three billion monthly active users. Jeez. You named number three, WhatsApp. Okay. Two billion monthly active users, and you named number three Instagram. <laughs> two billion uh, monthly active users. What's number two? What you both missed is YouTube. Damn! Oh, get out what? of here! That is a, you can't even send a DM on that website. <laughs> oh no! No! Where's Damn. Where's TikTok? TikTok here. I'll I'll pull up Statista since I mean I feel like we all love the numbers of this. Yeah. TikTok yeah. is. Right behind Instagram, 1.6. Oh, so, no, 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 no. So you have to convince me YouTube's not social media. You can't send a DM. Marquez, Marquez, Marquez. How many, Marquez, Marquez, Marquez. How many followers, how many subscribers do you have on YouTube? Almost 19 million. Correct. How many, how much engagement do you get when you make a community post? Depends, but it's about 1%. Doesn't sound like a social media site to me. How many... How many followers do you have on Twitter, and how much engagement do you get when you post to them? Uh, it depends on the post, but <laughs> I have I well hold on let's let's go to my Twitter now because damn I've gone viral. Sure, same. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was really good. Fun, like obviously Facebook's huge, YouTube second, WhatsApp and Instagram are both owned by Meta as well. Then you have TikTok, and then you have a bunch of messaging apps. WeChat, Facebook Messenger, Telegram, Douyin is the one from China, Snapchat, yeah. X is on there, QQ is on there, Pinterest is on yeah, there. Yeah, I was a little nervous if we were going to include messaging apps on this list, so WhatsApp I'm glad that was a good did. call. Yeah. If you go actually into YouTube Analytics and you sort external video traffic by social media websites, often the number one driving external 
a website to an MKBHD video is people messaging each other on WhatsApp. Interesting. They send the videos to awesome. each other and that gets tracked That's by YouTube. Awesome. Which now has bulleted lists and numbered lists and formatted code, text. Yeah, maybe. formatted text. So there I you go. Oh, man, I don't think YouTube is a freaking I also social don't think, media. I don't think the like messaging apps feel like social media either. But That's it's also a, true. a weird yeah, kind of media. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, seeing Twitter getting dumped on by Snapchat is really funny to me for some yeah. reason. People still use Snapchat. People yeah. still use Twitter. <laughs> I do. Not as many. No, I <laughs> love Twitter some the, still. Some of, Twitter. The, some of the ratios are crazy. Sorry, to, we're diving off the deep end, but like, would you have thought, like TikTok's huge, right? Yeah. Would you have thought that, I don't know, Telegram is half of the size of TikTok? That seems no. gigantic. No, but would I also wouldn't consider it a social media app. Would you have you know? thought WhatsApp is 50% more people than TikTok? Yes. That, that one checks out to TikTok's me. global now. So is WhatsApp, isn't it? Well, TikTok's not in China. No, yeah, it is. They it just is. have a different version. Yeah, yeah. No, it's called Douyin Oh, maybe. It, oh, oh, yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Douyin right. is separate. And if yeah. I include yeah, they it, have a separate. If I include it, it's number two. Right. But, but it's separate from TikTok because TikTok proper is the one that's not in China. Well, and I think I think Douyin has lots of like rules and restrictions that are on TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we learned but something. Would you have thought that Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, which is very unpopular and less than Snapchat, is also a third of TikTok? Damn, really? Yeah. That's pretty huge. I wouldn't wow. have thought of that. Yeah. Would you have thought that Pinterest is seventy-five percent of Twitter? Oh, I'm sorry. What's Twitter? I, I would have assumed Pinterest <laughs> is bigger than Twitter. Yeah, that's what I would no. assume too. Pinterest? I'm still. People love Pinterest, bro. Pinterest Name is crazy. Name a single celebrity on Pinterest. I'm not on Pinterest, so I can't. But I yeah, guarantee you, like, when if Paltrow has point. like a crazy pop in Pinterest or something like that. <laughs> when when Pinterest used to be big, I remember it just being the one social media site I could never understand. Yeah, I don't know why, and it wasn't from lack of trying. I tried. <laughs> on that website a bunch of times and I just don't know why I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Well, I still can't believe that there are 800 million redditors. Yeah. When they say monthly lay reddit army, they are not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And reddit doesn't get listed as a social media site by Satista. So wow. I do include that from reddit's own numbers. Why is YouTube a social media site and reddit I'm done. I'm done. Waveform yeah. is produced by Marquez Brownlee and Andrew, <laughs> Andrew Manganelli. Great job, guys. <laughs> We're part of the Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music is by Vane. So. Thanks. Can you imagine if it's falling? Marcus is like... <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>